You got to flow, CB. You got to flow, yo. It's your boy, Crypto Blood. Welcome to another episode of Mind Two Satoshis. It is May 7, 2018. Want to give a shout out to my wonderful YouTube subscribers. Thank you for the song request. Now I got a little cue lined up. <laughs> Thank you again to my man, Duffy Ham, for the flow, Joe by fat joe thanks for the song request w hand also by jawuku he wanted me to play some house of pain jump around that's a classic i got that in the rotation as well hope you guys are doing well this morning we got a few things to go over today uh one being i was this morning watching cnbc they were playing some snippets from buffett munger and bill gates interview and man they were just going in on bitcoin we're going to talk about that a little bit i tried to actually do a video recording of it but it didn't turn out that well so we're going to look at an actual article that i found that pertains to it so we'll, we'll look at that also ethereum bad news sec is coming after ethereum foundation it looks like i can't stand these people man sec is just nonsense but Let's take a look at this. I want you guys, all my faithful supporters, please go out there and vote for me. I've been so negligent about telling you guys to vote for me at the, for the CIA. That's the Crypto Influence Award that is coming up May 17th. I'll be there in New York. Um, but the voting ends on May 15th. So come on over to this site. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. Please vote for a brother. I am under the coolest influencer section so just go ahead and get a vote in for me greatly appreciate it so uh today let's go ahead and take a look at the market cap i'm using coin live coin watch today again kind of like this one so uh let's take a look at where we are currently market cap is at 432 billion kind of off the lows we we're inching toward 500 billion couldn't make it I told you guys that I didn't think we would a few videos ago. That 10,000 mark I thought was a nice solid psychological whole number for us to have a nice little pullback from. And that indeed is what we did. Bitcoin dominance is up, of course, 36.76%. On an hour standpoint, we're looking green, you know, for this hour. But in if you're looking at it from a 24-hour standpoint, we're kind of still red. The pullback was decent. Um, but we may have some more room to, to head lower. This chart is it's funny. This wave I drew is almost following to the T. So I think we may trade kind of in this range and hit this trend line. We want to go back to this trend line, I believe. So we'll see. But the article, first article is about Ethereum, as I, as I stated says here out of crypto invest ethereum sees market woes as u.s regulatory hearing looms u.s regulators will still debate the status of ethereum which may be deemed a security despite the distrib distributed production of the asset says here ethereum saw unprecedented growth in the past days but for u.s investors the digital asset may soon become unpalatable a looming hearing in new york later this monday was set to define the status of the asset at this point both the ethereum foundation and icos have used creative language to dispel the accusation of selling unregistered securities however the final decision is at the hands of regulators and the verdict will define the path of the markets someone getting nervous about eth sec hearing on whether or not it will be considered a security says whale panda in a tweet on May 7th, that was earlier today. After the news, ETH market prices sank a bit to $732, down 5% net in the past 24 hours. Ethereum may be vulnerable for the fact of performing an ICO back in 2014. Despite the regulation of the Ethereum Foundation in Switzerland, the selling of ETH tokens may be seen as distributing securities since this meant participating in the larger ethereum project it is unknown how the verdict when it becomes known may affect markets besides hampering u.s based investors ethereum will remain uh, accessible worldwide and when it comes to crypto only exchanges there are no limitations for switching between coins so additionally it says here ethereum has shown 
it is more dependent on the Asian markets as well as on trading against the Tether asset. Other tokens have various risk profiles and some are not so popular with American investors. It goes on to say here, hence the talks of pronouncing Ethereum a security and holding the Ethereum Foundation responsible may have a limited effect on prices modified by the price pressures from Asian investors. I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. This is what the U.S. has to, these regulators in the U.S., they're still trying to apply draconian old legacy system type of um, actions on a new asset class you know we don't really care whether or not they did an ico it was a it was a security or not a security when they did their ico that is irrelevant they can't really go after the foundation it formed in switzerland what they, they can't go after the people who hold eth it's not really uh, realistic for them to even try to take on that endeavor because it'll be very unsuccessful so uh, what are your thoughts, though? I want to know what you guys think about this. If the SEC decides to consider what the Ethereum Foundation did with their ICO a few years ago, a couple years ago, what are the ramifications price-wise? Um, me personally, I don't think I think it may see a initial move down, but it will recover because again, the technology is there is usable and it will continue to be used and i don't see the only thing that would be weird this would be the weird thing are all of the u.s based exchanges you take a, a coinbase you take a gemini you know kraken whatever you want to pick if ethereum is considered a, a security how does that play with them they're now holding or selling securities these exchanges Will they have to change their classification um, and register as, you know, an actual broker? I don't know. Um, but at any rate, it's too much money on the table and they're not going to miss out on that. So they'll adapt however they need to the U.S. Uh, exchanges. And uh, I think the show will continue to move on. Let me know your thoughts, though, people. I definitely want to know. Let's have a conversation about that in this video. But... The second one, second article today is I'm getting the article from Daily Hodl and it says here Warren Buffett predicts demise of crypto admits he was wrong on Google and Amazon. Billionaire Warren Buffett is one of the most successful investors of all time, but nobody's perfect. At the Berkshire Hathaway's annual share meeting, Buffett trashed the future of cryptocurrencies while admitting he didn't see tech gangs, giants like uh, Google and Amazon coming. At Saturday's event, Buffett said, I made the wrong decisions on Google and Amazon, report CNBC. We've looked at it. I made the mistake in not being able to come to a conclusion where I f really felt that at the present prices, that the prospects were far better than the prices indicated. Buffett says back in the day, Bill Gates had to tell him to stop using Alta Vista and switch to Google. Huh. As for Amazon, Buffett says he's always held Jeff Bezos in high esteem, but thought the odds were stacked against him. So this is really what I wanted to talk about and highlight in this article was the cryptocurrency topic. It says, so what about cryptocurrency? At the same event, Buffett wasn't shy about the new technology, boldly saying Bitcoin is probably rat poison squared. Buffett has a long history of trash talking cryptocurrency. Earlier this year, Buffett said Bitcoin is a mirage and he said he was almost certain cryptocurrencies will come to a bad ending. Despite his misgivings on cryptocurrencies, BNSF Railway, uh, which is part of Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, recently joined the blockchain in Transport Alliance. The group is made up of over 200 companies looking at how to use blockchain to create new standards in supply chain logistics, vehicle repair, and fraud prevention. That kind of covers it, but what I saw from the actual video, that I, the clip that I watched this morning on CNBC, um, and what I really wanted to get my two Satoshis on was the fact that Buffett said cryptocurrencies or, or Bitcoin is a non-productive asset. And I thought that was interesting because I understand where he's coming from, but he's wrong. Okay. A non-productive asset meaning 
something that doesn't yield you any um, any any earnings, any growth uh, from just holding that particular asset. In my opinion, you know, and maybe this is why he this is part of his investment philosophy is that he likes to purchase companies that mostly he likes to purchase companies that have dividends. But if you if you take that same ideology, that same premise that Bitcoin is not a productive asset, therefore I shouldn't own it. Well, you can say that about, I would say 85% of the stocks out there, you know, it's all speculation. So what he was saying is that um, basically we're banking on the next person being more excited than us about the project or the asset and hoping that the next person after them will be even more excited about it and buy it at a higher price which there there does hold some merit to it but there is utility with cryptocurrencies there even i've been very critical about bitcoin but there is even utility with bitcoin um i don't the you know the the ecosystem the environment has not matured enough to really see that come to fruition but bitcoin is more of or less of a non-productive asset then does apple pay a dividend i don't think apple pays a dividend you guys correct me if i'm wrong but you take a di you take apple uh if it doesn't pay a dividend i'm just holding a stock an equity it, it there's, there's no production there's no productivity in that we're hoping that the money that i basically give to apple in return for this stock this share um they'll use those monies to make a better iphone 12 you know so and then in, in return we'll see a, a more demand for that stock in the future uh, because of their earnings and their success in the marketplace but honestly i can't do anything with that apple stock other than sell it to someone else who if they bought it, if they're buying it at a price higher than where I bought it, they're thinking that the price will go even higher than where they're buying it. So I, I'm not really, I can't, I can't agree with Buffett on that, that it's a, it's just a non-productive asset. It actually has more productivity and more utility than, than any stock, the non-dividend stock that I've seen, you know? So, um, and really, if you even look at like gold, or precious metals if he's gonna say that that it's a non-productive asset so i don't want to touch it then i don't know why he would even consider having a small a portion of gold or precious metals you know he's not a huge pm person but he does hold precious metals he does hold gold um so why does he why does he feel like that can be considered a good asset when gold doesn't in it in itself doesn't produce you anything i can't hold a bar of gold and and, and pull yield from that i can't say i have a four hundred thousand dollar bar of gold it's not going to sit there and pay me a five percent dividend every quarter i'm hoping that the next person buying it is buying it at a price where they help the next person buying it you know will buy it at an even higher price so I don't, you know, I don't agree. I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. But, you know, Buffett, man, he, he's old. He's older. He's up in age. He and Munger, both of those guys, they were the masters of that paradigm. Like, they did it the best, that, that past paradigm, the legacy paradigm. This new paradigm that we're coming into, they, I don't even expect them to have the capacity of, to think on that level of the technology and seeing all the intricate possibilities with blockchain with, with cryptocurrencies so i don't you know i don't really look down on them i actually expect them to feel the way that they do it would actually surprise me and i would be shocked if they were like yeah i'm for bitcoin i'm for cryptocurrencies so on and so forth but i'm not surprised i'm actually this is what i would think 
uh, a person like Warren Buffett or Munger, Charlie Munger, would think about Bitcoin. But definitely, I want to hear what you guys think about their comments about Bitcoin being a non-productive asset. They're kind of right, but they're kind of they're they're wrong. They're they're right for the wrong reasons, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Let me know your thoughts, people. That's my two satoshis on that. Also, let me know about Ethereum. What do you guys think the uh, overall effect will be from the SEC's uh, decision or not? Maybe not even SEC. I don't know what regulatory group it is that, that's overlooking this, but I don't know. I don't think it's going to really matter, in my opinion. Uh, but again, you guys got to let me know and I'll talk to you guys later. Holla.